great introduction song with the great Luke Combs, an App State alum. So uh, thank you for playing that for us. Um, on behalf of Chancellor Heather Norris and Director of Athletics Doug Gillen, uh, we're excited to be here to represent App State and Sunbelt Media Days in New Orleans. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Gill and the Sunbelt staff for putting a great event on the showcase. Uh, one of the top conferences in all of college football. And I don't say group of five or power of four. I say one of the top conferences in all of college football. We have a very determined group of players uh, on our football team who are on a mission in 2024. We return almost 70% of production on offense and defense, led by these two young men, Joey and Caden, uh, who are with me today, who helped produce some of the best passing numbers in, in the country last fall. We have returning starters on both sides of the ball and, and on special teams. We are able to sign 15 players from the transfer portal to go along with our high school recruiting. Uh, as we navigate through the transfer portal, collectives, NIL deals, uh, we continue to be innovative at Appalachian State and build a plan that works well for us. Uh, our players, a lot of our players had big time offers. They turned them down, come back to Boone and stay here and build a championship football team and have a chance for a berth in the college football playoffs. Uh, Thanks to the support from our campus, our athletic leadership. App State's in a great con uh, position to continue uh, competing for championships and we offer our players a world-class education. Additionally, season tickets are sold out for the third straight year, and individual games are already starting to sell out. Mountaineer fans have broken the all-time Sunbelt attendance record for three straight years, and I won't be surprised if they do it again this fall. Our stadium was recently named uh, one of the top 25 in all of college football by ESPN, and we cannot thank our fans enough for being the best in college football. And just in general, our conference – and it, it, this is the, one of the premier conferences in all of college football. You talk about rivalries, and especially on the East. You go just to our, our schedule this year, the, the App State Marshall game is a longtime rivalry game that's back. Uh, it's played back in the Southern Conference days. The Georgia Southern game, uh, that's one of the best rivalries in all of college football. Coastal Carolina, James Madison, Georgia State. Uh, so, again, our, our side is very competitive, a lot of great rivalries. And again, it's going to be a great uh, season. It's going to be a very competitive, very challenging, and we look forward to the 2024 season. We'll now take questions from the floor. We ask those of you in attendance, please raise your hand for questions and a microphone will be brought to you. And once again, for those of you joining us on Zoom, please remain on mute. Please type your questions into the chat and we'll read them here in the room. Luke Creasy with the Herald Dispatch. I already see you smiling. Um, you talked about Marshall, and I know you have a good relationship with Coach Huff. Um, and I hear you might have to give him a ride home. Yeah, we're going to Coach Huff has some some travel issues coming down last night, and, and you think they have an aviation program, they would have a plane ready for him. But in saying that, uh, I've offered uh, to give Coach Huff a ride back uh, after the uh, media that media today. He better get finished early if he wants a ride back. We'll drop him off in Huntington. Coach Dominic Crusetto, College Football Dogs and Sunbelt Syndicate. Uh, previously, you've had many thousand-yard rushers, um, but haven't had one over the last two seasons due to injuries and other factors. Uh, do you expect to return to form as far as a thousand-yard rusher being on your team or with the weapons on stage? Do you expect this to be a pretty even uh, passing rushing offense this year? Well, we like, we'd love to have a balanced football team. I mean, it's, uh, it keeps the defense off balance, but we're going to play to our strengths. And – uh, again, we brought Joey and Cade Robinson, who are one of the best duos in all of college football last year. If you remember last year, I said we had the most underrated receivers in, in the Sun Belt, which I, I do believe we did last year. And our receivers have kept it improving and improving. Uh, we have a, a big-time quarterback, a talented arm who makes great decisions. But on the flip side of those things, we have great tight ends with Eli Wilson and David Larka and and Max Drag, and the list goes on and on. We have a very deep running back with Kanye Roberts and um, Mikhail uh, Haywood, uh, Anderson Castle, Armani Marshall. So there's only one football to go around, and but we have to make sure we put the ball in our playmakers' hands. And that's one thing we identify as a staff uh, throughout the offseason is who are our playmakers, how do we get the ball to them, and be intentional and be direct. Uh, it's uh, how do we get the ball to Caden Robinson. How are we going to get to, to Christian Horn, Makai Jackson? And on the flip side, how are we going to get the ball to our running backs and tight ends? So um, I do believe we have a, a lot of weapons on offense, and we have to make sure we utilize those in the right way. And when it's time to uh, get the ball in the playmaker's hands, we have to do that on a, on a continuous basis next this season. Emmanuel Pep of Sunbelt Conference. And uh, this question is for Joey. 
Um, you were an early enrollee last year. Uh, talk about kind of how that helped your process uh, in the off season of, of learning this offense and just kind of uh, talk about the luxury that uh, coach mentioned about having so much production back this year. Yeah, I mean, coming in uh, definitely with like a spring ball coming in, uh, it was good. Uh, get to get in the playbook a little earlier than, than I can and for like uh, fall camp and stuff like that. So just getting in the extra work with receivers, tight ends, uh, the coaches when I can watch extra film when I first got there, and then the returning quarterbacks last year that also helped me a lot. And uh, like Coach said, I mean, having all those weapons is – blessing on my part just because I know whoever I give the ball to is going to go out there and make a play whether it's a tight end receiver or running back so that part is, makes it easier on me. Thomas Terry with KTSW Sports to your right I believe yeah um, this more so is aimed at Joey you are congratulations first of all being named preseason offensive player of the year for the Sunbelt Conference and your coach kind of talked about how he was able to go inside of the transfer portal, pick up 15 new players there, one of which being uh, previous Texas quarterback, Charles Wright. How much will he be able to help you just inside of your game, progressing on to next season? Well, I'll step up before that. Charles Wright's no longer on our football program. So, um, but he will not be with us this fall. My apologies. Well, we got Billy Wiles from Southern Miss. He's really good. Still. Good guy, good player. Hey, uh, Coach Craig Stevenson from AL.com. You uh, experienced playoff football as a player. No, it doesn't happen for Coach, another 20 what minutes. Do you think about the new setup? Is there anything you'd like to tweak yeah. further uh, in future years? I, I like the setup. Uh, for two years, it gives us an opportunity to, to make a, a run at being the college football uh, uh, playoffs. And that's what you want an opportunity. And the years previous, uh, you had to be undefeated, be Power 5 program, et cetera. And you have to still have a great resume. But now, whoever the highest ranked uh, non-Power 5, Power 4 program has an opportunity to play in the college football playoffs. That's what you want. Uh, again, our goal is always to, to win championships, uh, uh, the conference championship, bowl championship, and now it gives you another opportunity to make the college football playoffs. So uh, it gives us a great opportunity. And again, we're playing in one of the best conferences in all of college football. Bless you. You all right? Uh, if you go back and, and look at things um, – I do believe our conference is set up for one of our teams in our conference to make a run and make a get a berth in the college football playoffs. Uh, this one's to all three of you. Um, you, Coach, alluded at the start to opportunities elsewhere uh, for these two on stage and possibly others within your football program. So for the players, Caden, Joey, what helped keep you in boom? And for the coach, you know, how much do you – not enjoy having to deal with outside factors like that in this new world of college football now? Well, I'll start it off again. We, we had several players who had uh, offers or had been contacted by other programs to, to, to leave. And, and I, I do believe we have a great culture at Appalachian State. I think it started back in the 80s when Coach Moore was there. We were, myself and Coach Satterfield were able to continue that. I think we treat our players the right way. I think we have the, the best interests of them. And they knew that we had unfinished business in 24. And they wanted to come back and put their name on the program, put a stamp uh, to to be conference champions. And so um, as the whole recruiting process, you're not just recruiting high school players anymore. You're recruiting your own roster. Uh, the day the championship game was over last year in Troy, we came back and we had exit meetings with our players. Every one of our players had exit meetings. And we said, where is it at? What can we do? How can we get this thing completed? We were part of our program. And then we came back. Uh, after after our the spring semester had our first team meeting and, and we set the standard that this is our team uh, we won't hear anything more about transfer portals nil etc but it really just speaks to the players we recruit the kind of character we have in our program we have great kids in our program who who have a lot of pride in wearing the black and gold we want to they want to put a great product on the field for our fans to be proud of and like coach said uh, one of my biggest reasons to come back was unfinished business and. Just the community, fans, coaches, teammates at App State. I mean, Coach gave me the opportunity to come play at App State all the way from California. So I, I, I'm a firm believer in finishing what I start. So, I mean, I started at App State, so I'm going to finish there. The goal is to, you know, win, win everything we can win and finish all strong. So, For me, um, Coach gave me an opportunity when I left uh, Central Florida, and he didn't have to do that. I was in a portal with one catch, so 
He, um, I'm big on loyalty, and he gave me an opportunity. I wouldn't be here in front of you guys if it wasn't for him. And um, there's no place like Boone, and it's home for me, and I love it. So that's why I'm, that's why I stayed. Coach, <clears throat> excuse me, Coach, got a question from Zoom. This is actually for all three of you. Uh, your team won five in a row to close out the regular season last year. What was the biggest factor in getting on that winning streak, and how do you carry it forward into this year? Yeah, it's, that's a fair question. We were three and four in October and lost four games by 17 points. Either had the lead in the fourth quarter, had a chance to win in the fourth quarter. And, and I'm a firm believer. I knew we had a great football team. And sometimes the ball doesn't bounce your way sometimes. Sometimes things just happen. And we had the mantra after the Old Dominion game, we had the lead in the fourth quarter, lost, had a chance to win at the very end. And we're coming back on the plane and or on the bus. That's had a long bus ride. But anyways, um, and – I said, man, how can I convey to our players, man, we're so close. All we got to do is keep working. And there was a picture of a, a Matic. Some people called a pickaxe and said, just keep digging. Uh, people usually give up when they're right around the corner, when it's right there for success. And the next team meeting, I went and uh, got the Matic and brought it there. I said, man, we're here. You just got to keep digging. And that just kind of took off. And we had uh, come from behind, went against Southern Miss, and then you know, uh, we played Marshall and then played James Madison. It's college game day at – in Harrisonburg uh, there, and and that was a big win for our program. Uh, again, it's another rank win over a ranked opponent, and our kids are getting confidence. And we can say Joey played better, I coached better, Caden uh, caught the ball better, uh, but it gave us some confidence, and you you lose in the, the championship game, which we're never proud of, but we made it to the championship game and ended our season with a, a bowl championship, and that really jump-started our 2024 season. Caden, Joey, what was the big factor last year? I mean, I'd say as a team, we just decided what we wanted to end the season. Like, I mean, it could go good, like like, like we ended, or it could go really bad. And we decided we wanted to be a winner. So we talked to ourselves what we had to do. And as a team, not even like coaches telling us, but we, we – practice was more intense. I mean, everybody's going way harder than what we were. And then, like you said, we just had to keep digging and dig deeper and give more effort than what we were doing because obviously what we were doing wasn't enough. So as a team, we just decided. Uh, and all, one of our sayings at State is uh, always be one and what's expected as well. So extra work in the film room, extra work after lives, after extra work after practice to to get you that that foot foot ahead of the game. And then when the game comes, it's just second nature. Well, when Coach Clark came in there with the pickaxe, we all thought he was crazy, but <laughs> but it worked. I mean, like like Joey and Coach was saying, we just kept digging, and I think we just found found our rhythm. I mean, we had uh, like our leaders step up, and just we had um, player led meetings, and I think everybody just bought in, and we we knew what we wanted to go get, and I think we we finished off well, but we still got room uh, for improvement. Bello with the College Football Network. Caden, you were in the EA Sports College Football 25 trailer. How cool was that for you? And, and were you hearing from him from all over, from friends, family? How was that going? Yeah, I was actually in New York at the time. Um, it was surreal, though. I woke up and I had like 20 missed calls, a thousand notifications. I was like, what in the world is going on? And I opened my phone. That's the first thing I saw was me running down a uh, kickoff return on the EA Sports game trailer. Like it was surreal, but yeah, it was really cool. Just just to see App State in general, even if it was Joey or whoever, it was just cool to see us being featured in that in that trailer. And we had the longest clip for like the um for for the trailer, so it was cool. I think it speaks for our program. You go back; we're one of fifteen schools who are highlighted on EA Sports, and you know now you go around the world, we are the Block A people know who Appalachian State is. So again, we're very proud of that. Again, two great ambassadors that are on that game. Uh, I'm not sure about their ratings because the speed ratings a lot higher than I expected for somebody on this stage. But um, <laughs> but it's it's great it's great for our players to to actually play and benefit from a game like uh, EA, Sport, EA Sports has provided. Uh, Coach, just talking about um, you talked about obviously the the portal and everything and being able to. Uh, recruit from there as well, especially uh, the offensive line. You have a couple of guys returning up front, uh, but you hit the portal in particular in that spot as well. Just kind of evaluate what you saw uh, in spring ball and through the offseason with uh, with that unit. Well, that's like a double edge, uh, a double edge, a double question in my opinion. In some ways, because 
you know, with, we knew that was coming with the offensive line and we recruited a high level at that position. And we usually lose two to three late in the recruiting process that uh, go to what they say, power five. I don't think they're better programs that, they, that we lose them to. They, just, they think the power five is better. So uh, we had to go out and be intentional of how we went with the recruiting uh, offensive line in the portal. So the programs we got players from, we knew the position coach or the head coach or someone on the staff. We want to make sure we knew what they were really about and were, were they App State players. And and that's one thing you can uh, miss sometimes. You're, you're, it's, in, it's such a fast pace in the transfer portal. Once they go to the portal, you try to call them, get some transcripts, give them an official visit, get them to commit. Well, that doesn't always work out if you have the right people in your locker room. And there's one thing that we, we take a lot of pride in is the culture and the, the players we have in that locker room. So we went, we were intentional about getting the right kind of people, the guy who fit uh, our mold, our kind of players. But we have a lot to prove at that position. And this is the first time since I've been here at App, it's been nine years, we haven't had one offensive lineman on the preseason all-conference uh, uh, board or list. And so that's going to be great. We go to that first team meeting, I'm going to walk in and challenge the offensive line. And I think that's good. But uh, I'll mention on defense, I want to make sure I hit this to the portal. We really uh, beefed up our defensive line. And last year, we were not good to defend the run. We were good to defend the pass and great and great and turnovers, but stopping the run was not our forte. So we had to go out and uh, we've gotten bigger on the defensive line. We've got more athletic. Uh, Santana Hoppers had an unbelievable spring. Uh, Marcus Clark, Sean Collins, who was hurt in the Marshall game, he had a torn peck. He's back. Uh, Big Mike Fletcher. So we've, we've, we've really established some depth of that position, so we have to improve. We had a great season. 9-4 is nothing – that's a good season in some people's eyes. It's really good. But we had to make sure we had to take the next step so we hadn't got beat up on the both sides of the offensive line because our conference is bigger, better, and faster right now than it has ever been before. Coach, uh, you just mentioned the defense, so you got a little bit to the question before I can ask it. But uh, – how do you get that defense to come out as strong as they did in that second half of last season? Um, because it seemed to have, you know, like you said, a little bit of a slow start on the rushing attack. But what what things are you guys trying to implement in order to get them to come on just as strong to start the year? Well, I think the biggest change we made last year was getting the the best athletes in the field, and not kind of not pigeon the way. He's only a linebacker. He's only a safety. How do we get the the the, the best athletes in the field with the most speed and? Uh, halfway through the, the season, we took a linebacker off the field to put in our safety, which we call the star position. It was really a hybrid. Uh, but, again, this is year two now coming into Coach Sloan, his um, his defensive unit over there. Uh, and they, they've really embraced uh, the challenges that Coach Sloan and his staff have given our defense. I think we have a lot of team speed on defense as well. And you know, I think we have uh, one of the best corners in all of college football, and Ethan Johnson. I think mean, he's, uh, again, underrated. And um, so we have we have the weapons. Uh, we have to make sure we um, line up right, line up correctly, play your gaps, and play fast. Defense is about reacting, and you have to react on a dime and do a fast, such a fast pace tempo. I think the the confidence we have the second part of the season really showed, and that's continued to build from last season to this year. Got a question for Joey and Caden both. Um, you know, going through the the season last year, you heard your coach's comments about just the strength of the league. What does it take to get through, you know, a Sun Belt Conference schedule? And how do you use that knowledge from last year and really build moving forward this year? I think it comes, it starts with just everybody buying in. Uh, it starts like summer workouts, winter workouts and whatnot. Um, and just everybody believing, believing in the plan of what coach has for us, our strength staff has for us, and just putting in the extra work. Because like you said, this this conference, especially East Side, is pretty is tough. So you got to bring your A game every week, week in and week week out. I think Joey mentioned earlier in the interview that you can't take your uh, foot off the um, gas. Yeah. You just got to keep going because anybody in this conference can beat you any given Saturday. Yeah, to carry on what he said, uh, you, you win the season in spring and in, in summer. I mean, if you get into the season and you try to start putting extra work in now or then, like, later, it's too late. And then, like, because especially the east side, every team is not easy. Like, you can't go into a no team thinking, like, oh, are we going to win this week, but I'm focused on next week. Everybody everybody got great players, coaches, and, and the atmosphere of every game is, is very high competitive. So you just work hard in summer, win, win spring, win summer, and then uh, – 
everything comes second nature, like I said, and always do more than what's expected. So extra work, uh, before film, after workouts, all that little stuff matters. Coach, we got a Zoom question. This is something that the commissioner referred to and Coach Helton also referred to. Uh, Sunbelt is playing divisional round again this year. Do, do you like that setup? I love the divisional uh, aspect of our conference. Again, it gives uh, the best two teams in your conference a holistic view of uh, who's going to play in the championship game. So I think we're right where we need to be. I think the Sunbelt Conference is – um, again, I mentioned this earlier, I'll keep saying it's one of the best conferences in all of college football. I don't care, SEC, ACC, Sun Belt. Again, we we are the premier group of five or a non-power uh, four conference in the country, and we take a lot of pride in that. So, um, again, I like where we are. And again, I think we are just getting started as a, as a conference. I think the more that we're here, the more stability we have as a conference, the better we're going to be, and, and, the, and the, we're looking forward to the future of Sun Belt football.